we know that God was testing a number of things here. He was testing Abraham's faith, his obedience, his fear of God, his wholehearted love for God. Everything was tested in this one act, as we can see. Think of one thing, and that is that he was testing whether God was first in Abraham's life. Is there something other than God that you value? Maybe your son Isaac. Do you value him more than me so that when I tell you to do something, you love your son so much that you can't do it? That can happen. God says something and a person loves his father and mother so much that he can't obey God. Or he loves his brother and sister so much that he can't obey God. Or he loves his wife so much that he can't obey God. Or he loves his, she loves her husband so much that she can't obey God. Or they love their children so much that they can't obey God. We can say that Isaac was Abraham's favorite son. He had only one son, and that was a darling of his heart. And we are, we are tested concerning the darlings of our heart. If you have children, and one of them is the darling of your heart, be honest. Many parents are foolish in this area. One of their children is the darling of their heart. And because of that one, the their parents cannot be disciples of Jesus Christ. I have seen that so many times. And I have also seen that people have heard these exhortations and they still are not able to cleanse themselves from this inordinate attachment to one of their children more than to the others. So they get stuck. In Genesis 22 verse 1. Never go beyond that. They're stuck there. We are to be free, brothers and sisters, from inordinate attachment to anything or anyone. And that which we value the most is the one we are attached to, which we need to cut. God didn't ask Abraham to kill Ishmael, but he asked him to kill Isaac. Think of that. Yeah, there is a lesson there for us. What does Abraham do? Great man that he was, without any exhortation, without any challenge. Verse 3, he rose early in the morning. The same old habit. It is a habit. This fellow who took six months to obey God 20 years ago, even today he'll take six months to obey God in something. This fellow who rose up immediately and obeyed God 20 years ago, today also he rises up immediately and obeys God. It's a very dangerous thing. When new converts are slow in obeying God, when you hear the truth and you are slow to respond, the chances are all your life you will be like that. Be quick. Don't discuss. He didn't even discuss it with Sarah. Sarah may have given another opinion. He just rose up in the morning and went on. He said, I've got to do what God says. There's no need to discuss with my wife whether it's a reasonable thing or not. It sounds so unreasonable. It was 100% against reason to kill your own son. Isn't that against reason? If there's anything which is 100% against reason, it is this, to kill your own son. No, he lived by faith, not by reason. And he saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac and he split wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him. God had told him to go to the land of Moriah. And it says, on the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Have you ever wondered why God didn't tell Abraham just to sacrifice him around the corner? Or in some place one mile away. Three days he had to walk. Three days. For many reasons. And I believe one reason is, God wanted Abraham to think about it. Sit down and count the cost. Or while you're walking, count the cost. For three days you can think about it and you can turn back. See, God doesn't want this. He wants obedience instantaneously, but he doesn't want us to act without counting the cost. He says, think about it. Think about what you're going to lose if you follow me. There are many things in life that you cannot do. Many comforts that you cannot have. Many pleasures that you cannot have. Many people, including your own relatives, whom you will have to offend and hurt. Think about it. Don't rush. 
the people who rush without thinking are the people who rush back also in some time of difficulty or testing or persecution but the people who are who count the cost and say lord it's worth it they are the ones who stick it out till the very end so god gave abraham 3 days to think about it and every time i can imagine abraham must have said it's worth it i can't understand it but it's worth it to obey god it sure is and it says here on the third day abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance and abraham said to his young men stay here with the donkey i and the lad will go up to this mountain and we we means i and the lad will come back we are just going to worship and we'll come back <coughs> this is the first place in the bible where the word worship comes people talk about worship meeting abraham had a worship meeting but it wasn't the cheap frothy thing that is conducted in charismatic circles abraham didn't go there just to clap and dance on the mountain top that would have been easy he says we are going to worship what was worship first time in the bible giving up that which was most dear to him saying lord i love you more than even that that is worship and there are very few people who live in that spirit of worship it is a fantastic counterfeit that the devil has called worship today just make people clap their hands and jump around a bit and sing a few jumpy choruses and say we had a worship meeting this morning garbage they may have thanked the lord but that was no worship meeting compare that with abraham with a pain in his heart loving his child going up and saying i'm going to kill him to prove that i love god more than my son that is worship when you've gone through experiences like that where we've given up to god that which is most precious to us we've been willing to hurt a father and mother who has loved us so much because we want to obey god that's worship when everybody else is going around pleasing them when we stand up for the truth when it hurts people whom we love so dearly that's worship how many people worship like that how many people are willing to give up something which is so precious to them that is worship when nothing on earth has any value for me when your job doesn't have any value for you when your profession your education doesn't have any value for you but god is everything then you are a worshipper and abraham's faith he says i and the lad will go yonder and we will both worship and we will both return how did he say that how did he say that we will both return when he knew that he is going to sacrifice him on top of the mountain it's a very interesting question which say well he must have been just bluffing he wasn't bluffing hebrews 11 says he was speaking in faith turn to hebrews 11 verse 17 to 19 it says abraham when he was tested by faith abraham when he was tested hebrews 11:17 offered up Isaac and he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son it was he to whom it was said in Isaac your seed shall be called how can my seed be called in Isaac if he's going to die he considered here is where his faith comes that god is able to raise men even from the dead do you know the first person who had faith in the resurrection abraham he had faith that god can raise somebody from the dead has god raised anybody from the dead up till now abraham no he hasn't done that yet i haven't heard of anybody being raised from the dead yet abraham says but i believe god can raise people even from the dead from which also he received him back as a type in other words he virtually isaac was dead when he laid him on the altar and in a sense he got him back from the dead that's why he told the servants we'll come back i'm going to kill isaac up there but god has to raise him from the dead because god has said that in isaac my seed will be called so maybe i'll kill him and god will raise him up because isaac my my seed has to be called in isaac god has said that he was so sure that what god has said he has to do fine we'll go along and we'll come back genesis 22 verse 6 and abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on isaac his son and he took in his hand the fire and the knife so the two of them walked on together and you can imagine all that was going on in abraham's heart at this time the pain the struggle and is saying lord it's worth it it's worth it i'll obey you if we have been through that we can know 
Lord, I'll obey you. I'll put you first. And Abraham took the wood and they walked together and Isaac spoke to Abraham. This must have been so painful when he asked Abraham this question. My father, here I am, my son, he said. Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham must have choked back the tears when he replied, God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. Then they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Isaac was a grown man. He wasn't a young boy because it says here in verse 6 that Abraham laid the wood, all that wood, on Isaac's shoulder. He couldn't have been a little boy that Abraham put all that wood on his shoulder. If Isaac was going to carry all this wood up the mountain, he must have been a, in his 20s, perhaps 25-year-old, strong, hefty young man. And when Abraham ties him on the altar, verse 9, he binds Isaac on the altar. Isaac could have resisted, but he doesn't. There we see a picture of a submissive son, of the way Abraham had brought up his son. That when he puts him on the altar at the age of 25 and says, I'm going to... And Isaac understands now that there's no lamb, I'm going to be killed. He submits. It's fantastic. Just like if God said, I know Abraham will command his household after him. It's tremendous, brothers and sisters, if we fathers can produce children like this, that at the age of 25, we tie them down to an altar to kill them and they just say, that's fine, Dad, I trust you. Tremendous. Tremendous if we can be fathers like that. And Abraham stretched out his hand and to kill him. And immediately the angel stops him and says, Abraham, Abraham. We can stop there. We know that God saved Isaac from that death. But we can learn something about Abraham's attitude. He raised his hand. There was the knife coming down to kill him. And God stops him. This was no play acting. He wasn't pretending. Hoping that at the last minute God will say no. No Lord, I love you and I prove it. I believe there are many, many things in this chapter that we could learn from Abraham. His instantaneous obedience, his faith that God has to keep his word. His fear of God is not consulting his reason or anybody else. Exactness in his obedience, going where God told him to go, counting the cost, putting God above his own son, giving up that which is dearest. A son brought up to learn obedience. Let's pray that God will give us grace to follow in his footsteps.